Hello everyone, I am Apurva Popat. I am one of the Chief Resident of Internal Medicine Residency Program here and uh, I'm going into Cardiology Fellowship. So today we'll be talking about some of the top most common USMLE myths and let's try to debunk those myths. Number one, USMLE score predicts clinical success. Now, if you've got 260 in USMLE, that doesn't mean that you will always perform great in your residency. That doesn't mean you will always be a clinical success. That doesn't mean you will match into all the fellowship you apply. So once you have your efforts and once you have the results of your USMLE scores, that you know how much you put into that to get the desired results. You, you have to consistently put in that effort all the time. You have to always exceed expectations of everything in order to achieve that success. So once it is once you have got 260, that doesn't mean you can stop performing everything. You consistently have to put in your hard work. Number two, scores are the sole determinant of match. No, that's the only entry point of your match cycle. Okay, you have to focus on research. You have to focus on letters of recommendation. You have to focus on network building. You have to focus on how to strengthen your CV. So it's a holistic application approach. Okay, scores will not determine your sole success. Number three. I cannot do USMLE because I am an old graduate. This is one of the most common frequently asked questions I get and a myth. So no doubt every program has their own cutoff. Like for example, university programs would have their cutoff that I want a resident or an intern who should be no longer than more than five years of their graduation. Okay. So every program would, would have their differing guidelines. Some of the community programs may have a longer cutoff like they can be a accepting graduates more than 10 years 15 years 20 years okay so that's not a set stone as long as you have some network building as long as you have great cv as long as you are putting in the efforts graduation should not matter okay and this is very very important for international medical graduates number four i cannot match as no one from my school and i matched i'm a live example okay our batch was the first batch to apply for the match cycle my seniors did not match any time and in fact my school initially was not initially registered in wdoms right so we had to do all the procedures get our school registered so that's not the reality your your batch can be the first batch to match okay fifth i cannot match as i have no research experience now as i said you know you have to have your application holistic having said that if you have zero experience in the research that does not mean you will not match some of the community programs are solely focused on community and clinical care and they might not be research heavy right some of the university programs may prefer that you know some research or you have some research experience so you can do more research in your residency but that doesn't exclude you from the match cycle okay number six IMGs are at disadvantage after USMLE being pass and fail. So USMLE being pass and fail, now of course the residency recruiting team is looking at the scores of USMLE Step 2 and USMLE Step 3, right? More importantly, Step 2. And it's now more holistic approach. The one thing which program looks at is whether you are a good team player or not, whether this person can be trained well or not, whether this person will listen to the advice or the feedback or not. That's the whole point of interviews. So now you have proven you have good scores. Now you have proven your good scores in step two and three. You have good CV. That's what is tested in the interview. Okay. Seventh, you need to study for years and years to match in um, in the United States. It's not years to years. It, it shouldn't take you five to ten years to match. Okay. Unless you have some circumstances. But Usually, you know, on an average, it's six to eight months per step preparation. If you are international medical graduates, if you are, of course, of course, having background of, uh, you know, MD in the United States itself, the timeline totally differs because USMLE is integrated in the in the core syllabus here. So you can take your exams immediately after your specific years. But I would say for international medical graduates, you can dedicate six to eight months for step one, six to eight for Six, six, six to eight months for step two and then you know you can start applying for visa electives so i think two to three years is a good ballpark to match you don't need five ten years to match in united states number eight 
you have to spend tremendous amount of money let's say for international medical graduates if you are spending more than twenty thousand dollars or more than twenty five thousand dollars you are spending somewhere very very unnecessarily okay now you will have 10 coaching centers you have 10 services everyone has you know specific services offered so if you if you try to buy everything it's you you will end up paying more okay so choose a service and stick to one service stick to one course and uh, trust them and just go forward with that okay and uh, spend your money wisely okay you spend your money wisely when you come here for rotations spend your money wisely when you choose your accommodation here so because if you keep spending more and more your of course budget would grow more having said that if you spend and eventually match everything is going to be worth you'll be able to pay off everything okay so i wouldn't stress much about it it's the only initial inertia and initial hardship you will face eventually you'll be able to pay off everything okay number nine first aid is all you need first aid is bible correct first aid is bible but first aid is a very dense book it is it is a, a book with tremendous amount of information and tremendous amount of fact you have to decode it okay if you memorize first aid you will nowhere be near to the success okay you really have to decode that you have to understand what is written in the first aid okay so check out your strike uh, strike website and see how you can decode the first aid okay number 10 if you fail once you cannot match this is also unfortunate right i i i get these messages often that hey i unfortunately failed you assembly step one what should i do should i leave the hope of matching so you know it it i would say this it will be challenging but it's not impossible okay you just have to work more on your more on your cv you just have to prove yourself with the next step that you have performed well in on step two you have performed well on step three so get good scores in subsequent exams build network do more research you know strengthen your cv ultimately you will be able to overcome that as well okay and final one 11 exam is easier in certain months no it doesn't matter whether you take your exam in january whether you take your exam in july this is a common myth you know that uh, you know american students would take this exam this month uh, international students should take this exam this month it varies difficulty at level no 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 it doesn't matter it's a standard exam format it doesn't matter when you take your exam okay thanks for watching and uh, please please do like and subscribe to the channel if you have any other questions or any other interesting fact you want to share please write in the comment below and do check out my instagram page here and uh, also check out our uh, usably strike website thanks for watching